The National Weather Service is forecasting a plunge of cold Arctic air to come across the country this week. Right now, more than 25 states are under winter weather and wind chill alerts. This week, every single lower 48 state is expected to reach temperatures below freezing. Depending on where you are, you could get hit with anything, listen to this, from blizzard conditions to heavy rains along with dangerous winds. Denver, as you point out, is expecting its coldest day in 32 years tomorrow. Do these three things to be more prepared for the cold and save yourself a bunch of money and a bunch of stress. When people think of cold winter weather, they usually think of broken pipes. Our cars and vehicles also have plumbing, and a little bit of cold really isn't a big deal. But if the cold gets bad enough, the coolant that keeps our cars cool in the summertime can actually freeze and cause serious damage. Engines have a plumbing system that flows coolant through a radiator, tubing, and the engine block. The fluid used in this system is a mixture of water and coolant, or some people call it antifreeze. Coolant is actually designed to resist freezing. But if the ratios are wrong and there's too much water in the coolant, it can be prone to freezing if the temperatures plummet. As an engine works, the coolant flows through narrow channels or passages that are designed to extract heat from the engine. The problem is that water, which is the primary component in the system, is prone to freezing. Coolant, however, is very resistant to freezing, but it lacks the ability to extract the heat from the engine when the temperatures are high, like during the summer. So there is a balance here, an ideal mixture of water to remove the heat from the engine and coolant to keep the whole system from freezing up. The formation process of ice is so powerful that it can crack and damage even engine blocks made from really strong metal. That same ice, if it gets into the radiator or the tubing, can also crack and damage these parts. So engine coolant usually comes in two different forms. The first one is concentrate. This is pure coolant, and it allows you to adjust up or down if you need to add coolant to the system. The other is 50-50. This is pre-mixed, so you can simply add it to the system if your system is low and you should be set and good to go. If you test your coolant and you need to adjust the strength, you're going to want to use concentrate. Because you'll only be able to extract a small amount from the system, you'll want to use something that's potent like concentrate to make a meaningful change on the fluid. However, if you test your system and the strength is fine, but maybe the system is a little bit low, you can just add pre-diluted 50-50 coolant and bring the system up to its actual capacity. Testing coolant is super easy. Open your hood and locate the coolant reservoir. It's a clear jug and the lid should be marked coolant or something similar. Often the lid is yellow. Pull some coolant into the bulb of the tester and you wanna make sure you have enough to fill the small vial. Tap it gently to remove any air bubbles clinging to the little balls because that will give them an artificial buoyancy and could give you a false reading. Once you tap that, you might see that one or more of the balls actually falls. Read the scale to see how many balls equal what freeze protection. If a ball is floating, but barely, it's a sign that you may want to add some coolant. Coolant at this stage could be pennies to add or adjust, but if your engine were to crack or break, that could be extremely expensive, several thousand dollars to replace. If your reservoir is empty, which is common when an engine is cold and a little low on coolant, you can perform this test by removing the radiator cap. It's very important the car be cold when you do this. Do not remove the radiator cap if the engine is warm, as the system could be under pressure and it could burn you severely. Repeat the same steps. Draw some coolant into the bulb and then check to see what the freeze protection level is. So let's talk a little bit about what to do if your freeze protection isn't at least negative 20. Your first option would be to take it to an oil change type business and have them do the adjustment for you. They may be able to drain some of the coolant out of the system, add concentrate, and you're good to go. If you want to tackle this on your own, you're going to want to make sure that you have the right concentrate on hand. Never mix colors of coolant. You'll find that there is orange, green, and red, and you want to make sure whatever your vehicle is using, that's what you're adding. If your reservoir is just a little bit low, you can go ahead and just add concentrate to the reservoir and the system will take care of the rest. If your reservoir is full already though, that means your system is at capacity and you're going to need to remove some coolant in order to replace it with concentrate. You can use a siphon tube or a hand pump to remove coolant either from the reservoir or from the radiator and place it in a small bucket. 
You're going to want to make sure that you dispose of this in the appropriate way. Contact your local refuse department and find out where to dispose of coolant. You don't want to pour it on the ground and you definitely don't want to pour it down the sink. Once you've extracted some coolant, maybe around a quart or so from the system, go ahead and replace that quart with concentrate. In order to know if your system is now freeze protected, you'll want to warm the engine up and let the coolant circulate and then perform the test again. By repeating these steps, you're going to make sure that your engine coolant is good to go for the coming cold. Vehicle batteries are another thing that is easily ruined by the cold. They're very easy to protect, but they're very costly to replace. Some examples of things with batteries would be lawnmowers, ATVs, side-by-sides, cars or trucks that you're not using, small rototillers, or small devices like that. Most batteries we use today are lead acid, and the electrolyte that's in the battery contains some amount of water. When the state of charge of the battery is low, batteries are prone to freezing. When a battery freezes, the thin metal plates inside are prone to breaking, and if it gets bad enough, it can even break the casing of the battery itself. And unfortunately, once this happens, the battery is trash. By far, the best way to protect any battery that you're not going to be using is to simply remove it and take it indoors. Removing batteries is usually pretty easy, but the internet will never win the debate on which cable to remove first, the positive or the negative. So the instructions we'll give you here start with the negative cable first. What's important when removing the battery is that when working with the positive terminal, you don't allow the wrench to touch the car body. If you allow it to touch the car body, it could arc and things can get really exciting. Once you have the cables removed, a lot of times there's a strap securing the battery to the vehicle. Simply remove this strap and the battery should be easily removed. And now bring the battery inside and the battery is safe. Sometimes, however, a battery just cannot be removed for whatever reason. It's in an inconvenient location or maybe you need to be using whatever vehicle the battery is located in. So the next best option is to make sure that the battery is fully charged. To save yourself a little bit of work, you can just check to see if the battery is already charged. To do this, use a voltmeter. Choose a low voltage setting like 20 volts and check to see what the voltage of the battery is right now. A fully charged 12 volt battery will actually read 12.7 volts. If your battery is reading 12.7 volts, you're good to go. There's nothing you need to do. However, if your battery is reading anything less than 12.7 volts, you're gonna wanna put it on a charger. In fact, a 12 volt battery reading 12 volts is actually very dead and highly prone to freezing. Battery chargers are easily available at any auto parts store or even a big box store. And if you're not confident with charging, make sure that you buy one that's automatic and let it do the heavy lifting for you. For most battery chargers, you can just follow these simple instructions. Attach the battery clamps, red to positive and black to negative, and then plug the charger in. If the charger has an on button or a power button, go ahead and turn it on and let the charger do the work. Removing hoses is such a simple task, but the consequences of not doing so are severe. Frost-free hydrants actually work by draining water away so that it cannot freeze. While the handle is actually above ground, the handle operates a valve that's actually well below the dirt, where the dirt is not frozen. So when you open the handle to allow water to flow, you're actually opening a valve that's in the ground. When you close the valve on a frost-free hydrant, there's actually a small weep hole at that valve in the ground that allows the water in the riser pipe to drain away, and therefore there's nothing to freeze. If we don't remove a hose from the hydrant, even if the hydrant is turned off, the water will not drain from the riser pipe, and now the whole thing can freeze up. If the valve that's below ground were to freeze, it could damage it and it can damage the plumbing that's attached to it, and you could have a leak underground. Underground leaks can be some of the most expensive to repair. First of all, they're very hard to diagnose and discover, and then once they're found, they require a lot of excavation to repair. And because plumbers are usually chasing other emergencies during cold plunges like this, you're probably gonna have to wait a while, maybe even with your water turned off. So of course, the easiest thing to do is simply remove the hoses from your spigots and your faucets. If you want to go one step further and protect your hose, go ahead and use gravity or blow through the hose to remove the water. This will keep the hose from getting damaged too. And the ultimate would be to roll the hose up and bring it inside. So that's it. By doing these simple things, you can put your mind at ease and enjoy the cold that's coming. Of course, it could be a lot colder than forecasted because weather forecasts are just a prediction, 
And by doing these simple things, you'll have the peace of mind knowing that your engines, your batteries, and your hydrants are well protected and you can enjoy the cold without worry. Or the weather could be completely wrong and we'll never see the temperatures they're forecasting, in which case you'll know that you've made the best decision possible taking these simple actions and protected your most valuable investments. Stay warm, stay safe, and happy holidays. Thank you.